Matt Bjorma. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. How you doing? Welcome to... Give it up. Give it up. Do this Thank week you. in Australia. <laughs> this live. That's right. We're all the way from up here in Indiana. I'm going down under to see what happened in Oz this week using none other than the Australian subreddit. What else? Top post this week. Let's go. The number one post of the week. 5,000 upvotes. Please just stop using QR codes for menus at restaurants. I agree. That's annoying. Are they still doing that down under? Did they not get the memo? We're, we're past that, you know? No more QR codes. No more masks. <laughs> at least, hopefully, we're past it. I don't know. Maybe we're not. I, I'll try not to jinx us. But um, QR codes at the restaurants, it is annoying. It's mainly annoying just because the phone is so small. I want to be able to see every menu item at once on a piece of paper. You know, if someone else is looking, they're like, oh, the chicken chicken burger looks good. I'm like, where's that? Oh, it's oh yeah, it's over here. It's in the bottom right. Yep, I see it. That does look good. And you can't do that on a phone. On the phone, you're like, what category is it? Is it under specials or daily meals, lunch? Oh, it's annoying. I'm curious what people have to say, though. Of course, this guy had to go and be considerate. You know, they should have both options because the phones make accessibility features available where it can read the menu to you, I guess, if they have it set up properly. Um, if you can't see or, you know. Things like that. So that makes sense. That makes sense. A lot of the apps are shitty, indeed. But also, also, I just love to be able to sit down and order. That's true. There's something to be said for that, you know? It's kind of extremely lazy, but there's something annoying about even having to go to your camera, scan it. Just let me relax, you know? It's kind of refreshing not having to use the phone for once during the day at all. Just use a piece of paper. Two for nine. Cadbury. Chocolate bars. Well, that's one way to feed your family for under $10. I caught the reference there. Coles infamously, you know, promoting $10 family meals. I caught it. I'm very happy that I've been around long enough been studying Australian memes long enough to catch that reference. I can't believe they still use him, to be honest. Who's him? This guy? Okay, see, see now that I don't recognize. Who is that guy? One of my friends works at Cole's head of office, and Curtis's reputation has gone down the drain among even Cole's employees. He lives in the U.S. What a moron. And gets flown in to do his promos. He was meant to do a cook-up for the team members, but canned it last minute. Only positive is that his, quote, free credit cookware you get from some of us promos are decent quality. Okay, this looks phenomenal. A U.S. journalist asks, how's the best way to start a fight in a 60s Australian pub? What's the quickest way to get in a fight in an Australian pub? Just turn around and drink your beer. Out of your midi or skin or whatever you're drinking, turn your glass upside down, and that's it. You challenge everyone in the bar. You ever seen it happen? What? Turn your glass upside down? Glass upside down, and that's it. You challenge everyone in the bar. You ever seen it happen? Yes. What's the quickest way to get in a fight in an Australian? What is that? I am not familiar with that. Whatever he just did, he just make that up? Is that actually a? fighting um, signal. Hey, I want to fight everybody at the bar. I'm going to turn my cup upside down. Okay. Just turn a bloody glass up, fellow, like, just like that, but I've got something in this. I don't want to waste the beer. Well, I reckon the quickest, there's two main ways. The quickest, I'd say, would be to interfere in other people's conversations. And secondly, would be to, or a difference in opinion in as regarding sport, the main thing. Why don't you just call me a... Regarding sport. I love how old people, people used to talk back in the day. Maybe that's still how they talk in Australia. Regarding sport, 
A name and you'll just see how quick I can get into it. What was it? Why don't you just call me a name and you'll just see how quick I can get into it. I've never been in one. Been somebody else's beer. Left hook the first bug you see alongside you. No, sir. Yeah. Made in Australia and you fly it backwards. Hey? What? Is it their accent or am I just hard of hearing? Made in Australia and you fly it backwards. Hey? What? Best way to get in a fight in a Sydney bar. Sydney bar, huh? Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's where you're at, Pops. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I assume they're at the bar, maybe. I don't know, maybe he's asking this in some random location. In a fight, in a bar. In a bar, huh? Yeah, a bar. No, not a burrow. In a bar, huh? You don't want to jump south and leave forward, you're all right. It's not hard to get into a fight. What? All you've got to do is walk up and... Oh, you're all right. Why am I struggling so much to understand? But well, it's not hard to get into a fight in a Sydney pub. All you've got to do is walk up and uh, and say something out of place to someone. That's all you've got to yeah, do. Yeah, and you get sucked in the jaw. Yeah, yeah of course yeah, you would. Yeah, yeah. no well, risk. Don't put me in it. All right. I won't put you in this category. You know, I feel like people used to be better at talking. I mean, I guess I see the irony in me saying that after not being able to understand a damn word anybody's saying. But just in general... They're much, you know, quicker. In in a in a way, I don't. I might not be making sense, but I feel like people used to be a, a bit better at like conversating quickly. The quickest way is down Wallamaloo. Turn your glass up. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> What? <laughs> I retract my statement. Way is down. The quickest way, way. is down Wallamaloo. Down Wallamaloo? What? Turn your glass upside down. What's with the turning the glass upside down? Well, there's only one thing to do with a scientific hypothesis, and that's prove it. I think I'm a little skeptical of this business of uh, hands up on the bar causing a fight, and that's what I'm going to do is check it. He's going to do it. <gasps> oh, they cut. Oh, man. Good thing they cut. That guy got beat to a pulp immediately following that. Willamaloo. And this is pretty cool. The very next post, posted by someone else. I would have thought maybe the same person posted, you know, two old clips, but 1977, $14 rent, $8 food. How does that work? The food's almost as much as the rent. Like, that. you could still get food for eight bucks. Not much, but. $14 rent, $8, okay. I get $43 a week, um, $15, $14 goes on rent, There's, I pay $8 food, $14 goes on rent. I'm sorry, I need to hear, how much does she get a week? I get $43. $43 a week, week. Um, $15, $14 goes on rent. So a little bit less than a third goes toward rent. I'm trying to compare that to like today's money because I know in a post somewhere last week or two weeks ago it said the average rent is now like you know you can barely get anything under $400 a week so that would mean you'd need to be making like $1,300 a week to be equivalent to, to that ratio at least $43 a week, that's it. There's, I pay $8 food. And <laughs> okay, $8 for food for the week. Wow. And then there's gas electricity. Gas electricity must be like two bucks. Phone bills and transport costs, food, sort of when I'm out at uni. How much would you have left over from your absolutely essential expenditure? Uh, I suppose about eight or ten which has to go on, you know, stationery and books. And um, books is the main expense. With incomes like... What? 
what job? I mean, I get that this is 17 or 1977. But what job pays 40 bucks a week even back then? That is, she must not be working very much, which makes sense. She's going to school. Like that, it's easy to see why most students are opposed to the reintroduction of fees. We're totally against any huh. government administered loan, fee, loan scheme designed to either replace allowances or to supplement them. The 91,000 Australian students currently receiving allowances under the Tertiary Education Assistance Scheme, commonly known as TEAS, are already unhappy with their financial lot. The government slots them into three categories. Dependent students at home, with a maximum allowance of $24 a week. Dependent students away from home, with a $38 a week maximum. So it's not from a job. She gets 48 bucks a week from the government, from some program. And independent students, okay. whose maximum is $43 a week. I'm funded under a scheme called the Aboriginal Tertiary Scholarship Scheme. And if uh, university fees were reintroduced... Is that even a thing anymore? what would your position be? Oh, I'd be totally at the mercy of uh, the um, Department of Education if they decide to pay fees. I mean, I couldn't do it myself. Wow. I'm very curious to read some comments, see how that has changed. Inflation calculator says $15 of rent is 100 bucks these days. Not going to find that. Food, $53 for an entire week. That's pretty good. I mean, it depends what you're buying, but... You, you're going to really struggle. Maybe you can buy some Cadbury chocolate and just survive off that for the whole week. Um, but 53 bucks for the whole week of food and $10 left over is $66 today. It's not bad when you consider how much everything else is taken care of, and this is pure allowance separate from income. The overall of $43 a week is about $285 today. No way you could live on an equivalent amount today, although I'm sure some scrape by with less. Also graduates in 1997 or 1977 with $0 of debt. Wow. Effing hell. They even had TikTok back then. No, I think the secret to why times were better is they didn't have TikTok. Team caught with $24 million worth of meth at the Sydney airport. Damn. That's a lot of meth. I mean, from what I understand, meth ain't even expensive. I mean, the poor folk over here in Indiana smoke it all the time, and they afford it. <laughs> how much is meth? Like, how much of a meth problem is there down under, I wonder? It's pretty big over here in Indiana. Um... $24 million? How do you get your hands on that? Apparently she was transporting all this for just $1,000 was her pay. <laughs> That's the biggest crime here. Her pay. I mean, that is ridiculous. $24 million bucks and they're only paying you a grand? Come on. 26 kilograms of meth. Homie had his entire weight limit of luggage in just meth. <laughs> Billionaire demolishing a third apartment block and evicting locals for his mega mansion. Wow, way to go, billionaire. That's awesome. Keep doing stuff like that. You're going to have a painting in the, what was it, National Australian Arts Museum. National Gallery of Australia. There you go. Um, run on over to Kohl's. You know, the Fairy Platinum Plus dishwashing tablets are on sale. 60 pack for $27, down from $69. They ask, why was it this price in the first place? It's an interesting question. I guess they thought someone was stupid enough to buy it. And they were wrong. <laughs> you really can't even judge this person. Someone needed the bog roll. <laughs> the bog roll. <laughs> you can't judge someone like this because one day you might be in that situation where you're tearing a bog roll out of the package in a state of panic in the coals running to the bathroom. Coals, same price, now product of Vietnam. So it went from Australian unsalted peanuts to roasted 
unsalted peanuts. And check allergy advice. Apparently they got sued by someone having an allergic reaction, it looks like, as well. Um, that's always kind of sad, huh? When you see something that used to be made locally being imported. You almost would never know, though, huh? Oh, look at that. Big Australian removed. Now it's the crowd favorite. Energy retailers' insidious power pricing charges households based on highest point of use. What? Being charged electricity prices based on their single biggest point of usage across an entire month? So-called cost-reflective tariffs. What? A demand tariff under which a customer's single highest point of demand for power from the grid measured in 30-minute blocks is used to calculate how much they pay for an entire month. How is that legal? You're telling me they, they take how much you used in one random 30-minute period. You happen to turn all the lights on and they just act like you had all the lights on the entire month? What do we got here? Something else on clearance. I'm not sure if this is also Kohl's. Click portable stool. LED was $10. Now, $10.01. The old switcheroo, huh? The Uno reverse card. They thought they could raise the price a penny and fool you. Hey, Australia for Canada. Is this evil? We got a t Tim Tam. There's only one left. <laughs> left out on the couch to fool someone. Because you can never eat just one Tim Tam. Huh? That's evil. In fact, that might be the quickest way to get in a fight in an Australian pub. Every tourist's nightmare. What in the hell is that? No way. Blah, blah, blah. I don't like that. <laughs> oh, that is messed up. That is a snake, isn't it? Isn't it? That would be a snake, wouldn't it be? You can tell by the way that it is. <laughs> that is absolutely every tourist's worst nightmare. <laughs> Excuse me, mate. Be right back. Gotta go feed the snake. If you think that's a nightmare, think about the poor snake when somebody sits down. <laughs> it was super common in NT. Water pythons love toilet bowls. Oh my god. I can't believe this is actually a common occurrence. You guys are brave. Even, you know, in the seclusion of your own private toilet, you could be attacked. My gosh. <laughs> I think that's about it for this week, folks. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great weekend. And I hope to see you again next week.